In ancient Rome, men held their own testicles as a sign of truthfulness while bearing witness in a public forum. Oh, hey. <laughs> I took over eight years of my life to physically write this book, Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo, The Naked Guy Behind Me, because athletes in the ancient Olympiad games competed naked. They were able to wear this little wrap that covered the head of the penis because according to the Greeks, the testicles could be shown because that was man's symbol of masculinity. And when they testified, they would grab their scrotum or their testicles with their hand and with their other hand pointed up towards Zeus and say, I swear to take this oath. That was a verbal commitment, a vow that secured that oath and that honor. But the head of the penis was not to be shown. The athletes could walk around naked, and some guys, obviously, if they were not circumcised, the propitial sheath would cover the head of the penis, so that was, that was okay. And that's one of the reasons why married women were not allowed in the stadium, because it's like, oh, I get to look at all these beautiful men, and their husbands would obviously get a little jealous seeing people like this, although there was only one in the history of mankind, Milo Croton, but there was a lot of big, strong, muscular dudes that competed, and the women uh, in the uh, in the women's sports festivals, which men, married men were allowed to, uh, to spectate. But Milo of Croton is a really fascinating character, a lot of mystery, a lot of questions that needed to be answered about this icon, renowned father of progressive resistance, because he lifted a calf every day, and then as he and the calf grew, when he matured, he was uh, capable of not only lifting, but carrying that bull not just like, okay, I take a couple of steps, you know, like someone would take, you know, heavy weight out of a squat rack. Milo was able to walk around his village. That was part of his exercise. Hey, the palestra, which is his workout facility, was too small. So it's like, okay, let's go to the outskirts. Ah, keep on going. Let's go visit some neighbors and friends and, you know, show them what I could do today. Show them how much bigger my muscles are getting. Show how much bigger my bull is getting. And obviously to intimidate his opponents. And as a warm up, Milo would walk into and around the arena, allowing the cheering fans to slap the loins and tug the tail of his colossal bovine pet. But ever since I was a little kid in single digits, after my father introduced me to Milo of Croton, told me about the secret to getting stronger, progressive resistance, it germinated in my mind throughout my whole entire life until I finally became an adult. And I says, okay, let me quit carrying this burden of thinking about Milo and let me put it into a book. So those of you who have purchased it, who are reading it, those of you who are in the process of reading it, I truly appreciate that. If you could send me some more comments and reviews, man, that really helps out a lot. The goal is to turn Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo, into a movie. It's a big book, so it'll be probably more than a movie. It'll be more like a mini-series. A lot of great, inspiring stories in here. When you read this book, even though it goes back over 2,500 years ago, it's motivating. These people had their own pandemics. These people had their own obstacles. These people had to endure burdens, oppression, racism, these people endured the burdens, and that's what makes Milo the champion that I believe he is, not just for winning wrestling competitions, but it was what this man did outside of the pit, outside of the arena, the inspiration that he had. So if you're down and you need a boost, you need to be inspired, motivated, entertained, and educated, Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo, is a book that will inspire you. I guarantee it. I'm John Abdo. Thanks for watching. We'll catch up again soon.